So if I'm writing the hepatorenal syndrome, so I'm writing the A, B, C, D, so that would be really helpful. So hepatic involvement, definitely the hepatitis A virus should be come out first. So hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and hepatitis D virus. Along with that, I'm writing that after the D, there is an E. So yes, hepatitis E virus as well. And also, once again, E4, the other viruses will come up like the Epstein bowel virus as well. And also other viruses also involved that I call right immediately after the E so you can write the Ebola plus L for once again the Lassa fever and once again A for Arbark I'm saying right or maybe the Marbar especially the Ebola Lassa and Arbark or Marbar is in Africa if the patients come up from Africa so you need, you need to think about the Ebola Lassa Arbark so what I'm saying the A for A B C D E means that all the Hepatitis A, B, C, D, E can be possible to cause once again poison. And E for Epstein Barr virus and other viruses box once again the Ebola, Lassa, and also the Arbark or Marbach viruses. Next to the A, then we need to think of the B. B stands on the once again. If you look at the B, if you look at the B, if I turn the B in a base point, so we can make it W. Very easily. So yes. So what I'm saying, if you just turn the B, 
just like that. So, so it will be like that. So yes, I'm saying the B for bells or wells it is. So yes, the wells it is. Means wells is and the name of lactospinosis. Another B means once again that if I'm writing the Wilson's or Wilson's disease. So yes, we can remember the Wilson's disease altogether. And C for once again the carbon tetrachloride is in toxins. And D stands on the drugs my name. Can you remember as I said that once again the more than two organ systems involved and more equal two organs, I say it the another box that you should think about the infection first, then connective tissue disease second. And third, I say the vasculitis, and fourth, I say the drugs. Knowing these facts, it will not be that much helpful rather knowing this very specific organ system involvement so that you can clinch and you can work out on the series starting with the A, B, C, D. My dear, listen very carefully, these are very important. Not only the ABCD, it's also a mnemonic So, once again, the drugs that I'd like to show, the drugs that we need to remember. A single drug that you need to remember the paracetamol. But I'm writing once again the rest in peace, you should remember, and only the end of the box with a hit. So this is the drug list can cause the hepatoronal syndrome. So what does it R for rifampicin, I for isoneogit, and P for paracetamol. If you need to remember the single drug, the paracetamol in UK is one of the important causes for the hepatoronal syndrome. And next with the H for once again. The other drugs, I4 and T4, the other drugs, T4 tetracycline and I4 iron and H4, I forgot it. <laughs> so, once again, just look at me, my dear, what I'm saying, just look at me. So, this is very important for the hepatitis syndrome that I'd like to say. The starting with the A4, the hepatitis viruses that you need to accept them first, is the hepatitis A, B, C, D, E. And immediately after the E is the Ebola, along with the Boston Epstein Barbaras, and the bundle packs of the Africa, there's the Ebola, as well as the Lhasa, Ebola, Lhasa, along with the yes, Arbor, the Marble viruses for the African origins. And immediately after the working, you should accept them together. Before going to the B, you have the Bell's disease with the Wells disease, with the leptospirosis, and the Wilson disease, the second most. And C for carbon tetrachloride, the toxins and the drugs, once again, the rest in peace, a single drug. Then you need to know the paracetamol. So what I'm saying, my dear, is very important. A gentleman here, right? So he's a 31 year old man. His background for the fathers. I'd like to talk on now, very specifically, the occupations, my dear. This occupation is very important. What I'm saying, the leptospirosis is very common for the one. Once again, I'm saying that FF rose with the airports, farmers, fishermen, fats. I'm saying vets, veterinary workers. I said the FETS, all right, fats. So. These groups of the people are more prone to develop, once again, the leptospire also. Because the leptospire, icterohemorrhagia, is an organism that is found in the red urine or rodent origin, with the red urine. So there is a chance of mixed up with the foods or sometimes the patients take you. So there is a chance to infect the patients. Yes, my dear. Okay. So what are you talking about? The hepatorenal syndrome. So whenever the hepatorenal syndrome comes up, definitely we should exclude that all the hepatitis viruses. The next talk of leptospirosis should be born in your mind so that you can treat the patient because the high suspicions of this leptospirosis is really important rather than the depending on the investigations mind. Because in his case also, we tried to explore all the hepatitis viruses and we found nothing at all. Only we critically suspected this gentleman only with the leptospirosis and we treat him confidently. And yes, as well, and at this point he's smiling. The heart is the toy the heart is the muscle. Yes, and, right. So he's smiling at this moment. He's discharging home today. So that's when we come up with this case because it's very important case. I'd like to talk now. So I listen very carefully. The leptospirosis equal to just remember the hepatitis syndrome plus farmers. This is very important. So yes, you got the ABCD. In this case, then you are not getting the pharma, so the pharma having a hepatitis syndrome first case, we should think about leptospirosis. Along with that, yes, once again, some of the coagulation disorders are also associated with the leptospirosis, other than other A, B, C, D, that you can provide that you know. So we also found some of the D number is very, very high, and some of the PT negative are also raised, means the DIC having some of the coagulation disorders also associated with leptospirosis. So my dear, listen very carefully, whatever, in the leptospirosis. 
usually the patient comes with a fever. So he has got the fever. And they have the extreme myalgia. So he has got the, yes, the extreme myalgia. And also the headaches, the scaling of the And also some of the low back pain as well, altogether. So he has a typical pattern. With that, the hepatic failure, along with the renal failure. We found that I showed them. Along with the, one of the important things is the pharma, he is also having a history of a chronic alcoholism. So we found the test, the GGT is raised, and once again, I'd like to talk into the important biochemistry that we found that the AST LT ratio is more than two, which also gives us the diagnosis on the alcoholism, the alcoholic hepatitis may be associated with that. On top of that, he has the left spine. So let's see some of the investigation data in this case. So I would like to go back first. So this is the temperature chart. So you see the temperature chart. So it's a high grade fever. You see the 102, 103, 103. Yes. So it's a high grade fever. Always one, even even one zero four, and he's getting down after having the treatment. Yes, so the fever and also low back pain, as I said, that some of the mild and some of the occasional some breathlessness. See? So yes, he has some of the right upper quadrant pain as well, and some of the tenderness. And he has also bypass the STL duration more than two minus is nothing but and GGT is raised and some of the blood is reduced so acute and chronic liver disease and some of the decompens because he has got the ascites as well, some of the renal failure. So what do we got? On top of the chronic liver disease due to the alcoholism, he has found to be having the acute liver failure along with the renal failure on the background of the farmers. On the background of the high grade fever with the myalgia, with the low back pains, with the coagulation disorders, all that together, very high suspicions of the infarction disease. Yes, most likely the leptospirosis. Yes, we try to exclude the other things I'm showing here. So, yes, starting with the investigations here, you see the NTHBC. We try to exclude the hepatitis B as well, the total NTHBC. This is a protumin time, it was normal here. So here is a, you see the platelet is reduced, there is nothing with a chronic liver disease. The hyperspheres are leading to. And here you see the, some of the hyponatrium hyperglycine initially, or the, some of the LBB level is 1.7, so this is the chronic liver disease. And creatinine it was 3.01, it was Initially, more than that of that, renal failure, acute renal failure. So, yes, so this is hepatosplenomegaly. Once again, is another important feature, an ultrasound that I've found once again towards the favor in lactospirosis. But once again, the hepatosplenomegaly can be, he is chronic liver disease with the portal hypertension may be another reason because the alcohol can cause the hepatomegaly and splenomegaly for portal hypertension. But on top of that, that we found, you see the gamma GT is 101 is increased, so this is due to the alcohol induced. So we found nothing in the urine culture. The ferritin was very, very high, more than 1200 is an inflammatory marker, so we proved it because we've done it once again and we have seen this gentleman is only for the inflammatory markers. Ferritin is in acute phase reaction protein. Vitamin D it was low. We found it and we injected the vitamin D as well. And also for this reason we found some of the calcium was low initially. And AST is 254 is important. And here is the we we done the iron profiles and we have seen this iron profile is absolutely fine, not more, uh, not less as well. So something like that. So not the iron overload as because we have seen the ferritin level is very, very high. And this is malaria parasite is not seen. AST once again 299, near about 300 you see. And some of the white blood cell count you see the 13,000 means the neutrophilic, uh, some of the, sorry, leukocytosis. Along with the creatinine level is getting down after having the treatments. 
and some of the mileage and also some of the light is also getting up so some of the penetrating information is also there and this is the D-dimer, this is really important so D-dimer was increased at the initial point so some of the coagulation disorder at the initial point so we done the upper endoscopy to exclude the viruses of the chronic liver disease but we found nothing here so and also we done to exclude once again the hepatic vein thrombosis as well because we should we initially had some of the suspicions because having the right upper quadrant pain along with some of the liver biochemistry was altered on the background of the chronic liver disease and the APTT and PT was uh, slightly raised with the PT and here is the amylase calcium and also light is getting down normal and here is the biochemistry only potassium was getting down and the ferritin is getting down from 1200 to 467 so it was an inflammatory insult and this getting up 3.2 and now you see all the biochemistry getting the hematology reports are getting normal so i'd like to talk more about this it's very important so once again what you have seen this right so somebody talked for the uh, background of the farmers presenting the high grade fever with some of the wild you know, having the hepatorenal syndrome having found once again coagulation some of these orders, along provided that some of the hepatitis A, B, C, D, they are excluded, and no drugs is here as well. On the background and top of the list, there's gentleman also having the alcoholic hepatitis, that may be the background, but on top of that, the leptospirosis having this insult. So I'd like to show some of the features. He has, this gentleman also has the, still he has got the, so, in another video clips, he, he has got the yellow tints, he has got the jaundice, all right, and the abdomen examinations that he found the abdomen is distended. And he has got the typically the right upper quadrant. Hello. Tender. Right. Still is tender. Yes. But he's getting reduced and having a slightly palpable splenomag alley as well. Slightly palpable. Shashtan, shashtan, shashtan. Yes. So, my dear, what I'm saying, it is very important. Initially, having, of course, the, we covered the treatment by antibiotics, but having some of the confusions. Right, these gentlemen have already developed the hepatic vein thrombosis or not, that's very good. Because the patients comes up with the right upper quadrant pain, having the tenderness, having the hepatomegaly, having the liver biochemistry is altered, so should be diagnosed the hepatic vein thrombosis, the suspicion is needed. We visually tried it out to exclude the diagnosis of hepatic vein thrombosis because the diagnosing them and we need to treat them once again, giving the anticoagulation treatment. But we tried very visibly to exclude, yes, this gentleman doesn't have the hepatic vein thrombosis. But we tried and we'll follow up him all together in the next time. I'd like to show one of the features. Here we also by writing So one of the important talk my name is very important. One of the important tips and tricks that I'm saying. Whenever you have the biochemistry of the liver biochemistry is altered, the AST and LT is raised. So what you need to do, what you need to do, the ASTLT ratio should be done. If the ratio is getting two, this is nothing but the ah, ah means alcoholic hepatitis. Whenever you got the AST and LT ratio is getting then less than one, so you should think about the this is nothing but the NASH, non-alcoholic state of hepatitis. So I know this is box, this box is very important to know about to reach the diagnosis. So we found in his case the ASTLT is greater than two, having the alcoholic hepatitis, and also having the serum albumin level is getting down. So once again, he has some of the chronic liver disease features due to the alcoholism. On top of that, some of the alcoholic hepatitis. On top of that, once again, the leptospira means the leptospirus is involved. Another talk that I'd like to show here is very important. I have come up with the word of the HVT. Hepatic vein thrombosis. We call it the Bart Sherry syndrome. So why they listen very carefully? Whenever the people comes up with the right upper quadrant pain, 
with the tenderness with once again the ALT, AST, or whatever the bilirubin, means the liver biochemistry is increased or just cut it down. So once again I'm saying the right upper quadrant pain with the tenderness with SITs is I'm saying. So we need to think about the diagnosis of two categories. So this is the HVT and once again the PVT. On the background of some of the coagulation risk factors should be needed. So there are a long list of risk factors I'll, I'll talk on in the different video clips so that you can understand actually on why that you need to think about some of the thrombotic tendency can be happening. So what I'm saying, the HVT and PVT provide the right of a quadrant pain and tenderness with the ascites. So what you need to do, how to differentiate? It is said that HVT hepatic vein thrombosis, so hepatic, the word will be helpful, means the findings of hepatic will be there and findings of hepatic will not be here. What does it really mean? It does really mean the age for hepatomegaly and age for hepatic biochemistry will be altered. In contrast, that will be absent in PVT mitral. So very simple that I talked to you. So when I talk, so whenever the person comes up with a right over the pain, with a tenderness, once again, with the ascites, provided the some risk factors of the thrombotic tendency, so we need to think about the two diagnoses. The first one is the HVT, and the second one is the PVT. The HVT once again, the age will be there. In PVT, there is no age. So once again, the HVT, age will happen by any, and age will happen in Margulis, to meet the period of the LTS, to all the altar. In contrast, the PVT, there will be no happen by any. And no, once again, AST, LTS, and the period of Margulis, to happen in Margulis, to not the altar. So this is important differential diagnosis to reach, to know about the genetics, HVT, and the PVT. I'll discuss in other videos regarding this all together, you know, all them, right now, what does HBD and other big factors, the thrombotic big factors. Yes, by the doctor, I'd like to summarize now what we learned this again. We learned the multiple system involvements and what are the causes of multi system involvement and how the approaches should be done starting with the infarctions and then cardiac disease, vasculitis, and the drugs. Immediately after that, we getting down the closure, the hepatorenal signal were very specific, simple. We learn in other video clips in cardiac renal, cardio renal syndrome. So it's a syndromic approach is one of the best approach to learn and to pick the diagnosis to give the best ideas to patients. So we learn the hepatoral syndrome, the mnemonics that we learn, the A, B, C, D. So once again, we need to accept the A first before getting down to the B diagnosis. So we've done in this case, we accept the A, but we got we done and we suspect the case of the well, well disease or leptospirosis. And we found this, yes. On the background of once again, the farmers having the hepatoronal syndrome, so diagnosis, well to this. Once again, having coagulation disorder, once again, diagnosis, well to this. Once again, the high grade fever, along with the myalgia, is a well to this. Having the hepatosphere mechanic, well to this. So, yes, all these suspicions is needed to start the treatment before sending the investigations. Yes, my dear. So, what we have done, we worked out. We tried to exclude the other possible causes and also other bacterial infections as well. So for the leptospirosis diagnostic approach, my dear, it's very much important. It's a simple talk that I like to finish here. So hepato renal if you remember, the hepato, we need to do that in the first trick, the blood culture. So if you can remember the hepato, the word into the have the first trick, means the hematological test, I'm saying, the HRS. So what is that? The blood culture in the first trick, that will be helpful to cleanse the leptospirin to do it. Second week, once again, the renal syndrome. So yes, the renal means the urine culture will be helpful in the second week to cleanse the leptospirosis. So what I say, the first week, the blood culture, second week, the urine culture. And the treatment is only the penicillin, and we've done the set trials on our main several sporing groups, and also high, high prospective antibiotics, which can heal the bacteria like the leptospirosis. Yes, my dear doctor, so high, strong suspicion is very really important, and leptospirin diagnosing is really difficult and the labs are not supporting for diagnosis of leptospirosis. So high suspicions in a case like the leptospirosis is really important. I hope that my dear, the summary talk starting from the multi-organ approach, and after that, the hepatitis of the differential diagnosis, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D. And after that, once again, we learn some of the important differential features of alcoholic hepatitis and non-alcoholic state hepatitis. And also we learn all together, also that to differentiate in between the ASVD and PVD. I hope that you enjoyed my dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you.